بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم میں اسلام علیکم پاکستان وی آر بیک وتھ کارپوریٹ کارپوریٹ گورننس ان آر پریویس سیشنز وی آر بیسکلی ٹاکنگ اباؤٹ کارپوریٹ گورننس اینڈ امپلائیز وی لکڈ ایٹ نالج بیسڈ اکانمی وی لکڈ ایٹ دا 149 لیبر لاز وی ٹاکڈ اباؤٹ ہاؤ امپلائیز کین بینیفٹ ہاؤ امپلائیز کین بی میڈ اے پارٹ آف دی آرگنائزیشن اینڈ بیکم شیئر ہولڈرز واٹ از ایکوٹی ہاؤ دی امپلائی کین بی موٹیویٹڈ ان سچ اے وے بائی کریٹنگ اے کنڈیوسو انوائرمنٹ اینڈ کریٹ انیبلنگ فریم ورکس which can optimize the productivity of the employee thereby increase the revenues and the profitability of an organization and then the role of trade unions and the collective bargaining agent which sometimes can be positive and also sometimes which can be negative and detrimental so again different aspects were basically shared uh, in our previous sessions now we are now moving on to uh, the most important uh, stakeholder of an organization and that is the customer now why is the customer so important because all the sales and all the profits of an organization depend upon the customer if there is no customer no matter how good the organization or how good the product is and if no one is buying it then where will the organization go it will end up as a bankrupt organization so the customer famous saying the customer is always right and the next famous saying is that the buyer or the customer is always sovereign so again that is the level of importance which is given to a customer now ladies and gentlemen what we have to see is that when we are talking about customers then again what is their role what is their stake and what are their considerations when dealing with an organization and then how do they become loyal customers uh, and repeat customers that is extremely important now ladies and gentlemen when we are going to be looking at these different aspects and spheres uh, of corporate governance and the role uh, of the customer then what we can see is is that good corporate governance should place the customer as one of the important stakeholders and should give him his due share so that is extremely important that uh, a, a company should not be exploited we talked about uh, last time we talked about toyota corolla we talked about toyota uh, as an organization one of the largest organizations in the world but unfortunately despite the fact that they carry such a good reputation they had this flaw in the brakes and the customers uh, greatly suffered and therefore there was this class action suit in which 1 billion dollars was given as compensation we talked about enron in which 7.2 billion dollars was given as compensation so again uh, these uh, depend upon the customers and the different stakeholders and how they tend to engage uh, with the organization and how they make the organization more accountable and more diligent in their approach more merit oriented uh, in their decision making now this is how uh, uh, these customers uh, basically uh, tend to play their role within the organization now there is also the consumer uh, which means any person who buys or hires any services for some consideration paid or promised and includes any other user of goods or services using them with the approval of the buyer it does not however include a person who obtains goods for any commercial purpose or for resale so uh, again ladies and gentlemen uh, the consumer is a form of customer but sometimes the consumer uh, does not necessarily uh, directly contribute to the financial uh, growth of the company so the customer usually is someone who is directly contributing and that means is paying for some service or is paying for some uh, product however a consumer could be a consumer for example of electricity could be a consumer of gas could be a consumer of a particular service uh which is which is provided uh but might not be directly paying for it so therefore there is uh, a a very subtle difference between uh, the customer uh, the consumer and the client so uh, again uh, there is a great overlap many people uh, tend to look at all three as the same as synonyms of each other and if we want we can also create a distinction between the customer who Uh, is very important the client uh, and and then uh, the 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 consumer so again these are different forms uh, of the customers uh, which are always there then there are various rights of customers and that is uh, the right to safety so when we are talking about the right to safety then protection against the marketing of goods and services which are hazardous to life and property and the right to be informed the consumer has the right to be informed about the quality quantity potency purity standard and price of goods and services so what we see ladies and gentlemen is that there are regulatory bodies around the world which are global regulatory bodies 
and then there are national regulatory bodies which basically ensure that different organizations and different institutions uh, and different corporate bodies uh, follow various frameworks and various laws and also do not uh, give something which is hazardous to life and property. So, uh, it cannot be that you tend to sell uh, poison because that would kill human beings. Uh, it is very important to put an expiry date because after the expiry date then the product becomes toxic. Uh, it is also important uh, that the ingredient should be specified so that people know that is it processed, is it organic, uh, does it have uh, any uh, negative uh, elements which can adversely affect health. All of those things become very important. And then the right to be informed, it can be about the quality, it can be about the quantity and therefore, you see uh, things are like 200 ml, 500 ml, uh, 1000 ml. So, that is the quantity. Uh, the quality also uh, it can be determined by the customer and can be a personal choice, but generally uh, it can be uh, written uh, the, about the quality and then its potency, that how strong is it. Uh, just like when we are taking vitamins, uh, sometimes it is written that it is 25 percent, 100 percent, 200 percent. The level of purity, uh, very important. We see it on juices that um, 50 percent, 75 percent, 33 percent, 100 percent. The standard according to which uh, comparable standard is this product or service uh, being marketed and then definitely the price of the goods or the services are extremely important. So, uh, both of these things are very important. One from the point of view of safety to ensure that uh, the consumer uh, should not be given a product or service which can be detrimental to his or her life or his or her uh, body and then the right to be informed that everything should be properly written so that uh, the customer can take what we call is an informed choice and cannot be uh, sidelined or sidetracked uh, which we have been see seeing even at a global level that uh, there have been different companies especially those related to food uh, who have compromised on the quality and the standards and also the values based upon which that food product is being marketed and sold uh, across the world. So, that becomes uh, extremely important. And the right to choose, the right to be assured wherever possible access to a variety of goods and services at a competitive price. And the word competitive price is very important that the profit should be reasonable, they should not be exploitative, they should not uh, be something uh, which cannot uh, be comprehended or cannot even be perceived just because. Uh, there is a monopoly for example or maybe an oligarchy or maybe there has been a cartel. It does not mean that you adversely uh, tend to uh, subjugate the uh, customer towards uh, negativity and just look at uh, the price of uh, the price of fertilizer right now in Pakistan. The price has gone to excess of uh, 8000 rupees. Now, that is just mind boggling that in a agri economy such things are happening or sometimes what we see is that uh, certain products are sold. Uh, at 200 percent margin, 300 percent margin, 500 percent margin. Now, that again uh, is unethical and immoral and therefore, uh, there should be a corrective action uh, by the organization. So, that the rights uh, of the uh, uh, of the customer are not encroached or uh, infringed upon that is uh, extremely important the right to be heard. So, if there is a grievance or there is a problem the customer must have accessibility to a certain platform where they can share their grief or can share their complaint and, and that platform should be effective. It should respond uh, proactively towards that particular employee and then the right to seek uh, redressal. It could be uh, against any unfair uh, trade practices or unscrupulous exploitation of consumers or uh, it could also be uh, the fact that there could be different platforms. There are platforms in the government in which you can apply as a customer or there could be something like the consumer protection court which tends to uh, give a uh, redressal against uh, such issues uh, which are prevailing uh, within the corporate structure. So, all of these things uh, are present over there. The right to consumer education is also very important. Just like I was mentioning a little bit earlier that uh, it is important to educate the consumer. The consumer when picking up the product should be able to understand what is the product and there should be uh, no inconsistency number one. Number two, there should be no ex exaggeration. Number three, there should be uh, a, a clarity of what the product is and number four, it is extremely important that it should not be jargon based so that the client can understand, the consumer can understand, the customer can understand what the whole product or service is about. So, that uh, again becomes very important and when we are looking at all of this, then we see that it becomes the responsibility of the organization to ensure that uh, there is no misstatement. 
there is no misguidance, there is no misfeasance and most importantly, uh, the customer is sovereign and therefore all due regard to be given to the customer. Thank you so much.